Okay. Okay, we are online already. Dr. Sonia, you can start. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening for Malaysians. Good morning, good afternoon. The depends on you where you are. A uh, warm welcome to all of you. A qualitative interview analysis by using moderator for this workshop. This workshop is organized by the Platform Research and Development YouTube channel. On behalf of the organizer, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. Now I would like to invite our Prof. Dr. Aminul Islam for the uh, opening speech. Thank you. Prof, the floor is yours. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sonia Lohana. Uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Very good morning, uh, good afternoon, and uh, good evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mahmoud Kasir Alam for agreeing Hello. to you. Hello. Yeah. Hello, bro. Can you hear my voice? Yes, yes. All right. So, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mohammad Kasir Alam. Uh, the senior lecturer at Bragg Business School of uh, Bragg University, Bangladesh, for uh, accepting our invitation and uh, joining this webinar. Uh, this is an, a very important uh, webinar, and I have been getting requests from uh, many for almost uh, one year. And uh, as I promised, about six months before that, uh, we'll organize one for you. So finally, I got uh, Dr. Mohd Kassar Alam uh, with you. And uh, the topic today is qualitative uh, interview analysis by using in vivo. So as I understood, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Kasur Alam uh, agreed to focus more on practical, but of course, uh, you will have some uh, uh, discussion on the conceptual uh, uh, parts of uh, qualitative research and uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the use and, uh, of uh, in vivo in uh, research, social science research, okay? Um, we have been organizing uh, webinars, I think, more than a year uh, since we launched the YouTube channel. And thank you very much for uh, subscribing and supporting the YouTube channel. And it has been going quite uh, quite fast. We already have 5,500 uh, subscribers to the channel. And uh, there have been always complaints on uh, from participants that I'm not adding anything on the qualitative research. <laughs> so there was an attempt. Uh, by uh, Dr. Shahabuddin uh, on the qualitative research, and I did share in my WhatsApp group, and many of you uh, listened to Dr. Kasu Alam before, so I'm, I'm sure he is not new to many of you. Uh, so today's uh, session will be more unpractical, and uh, uh, I won't take much time because you have been uh, listening to me for a year or more, okay? And since uh, the moderator somehow is missing uh, due to internet issues, I guess, so... Um, let me uh, introduce the speaker for today's session. Uh, Dr. Mahat Kausar Alam uh, is, is born in Bangladesh and he has completed his PhD from University of Putta, Malaysia. Uh, he has a good number of publications in imperfect journals, good journals. And uh, recently he has joined uh, the Bragg Business School, one of the leading uh, private university in Bangladesh. And he's one of uh, the very good uh, uh, researchers that I know uh, who focus on qualitative research. And I'm very sure you will be benefiting a lot from this session. Okay, so with that, let me invite uh, Dr. Mohd Kasir Alam uh, to start your uh, session. All right. So now the session is yours, Dr. Kasir. Thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Uh, very good evening, and also a very good evening uh, to the listeners. At uh, first, I would like to uh, show my humble gratitude to the uh, speaker here, the our uh, Sunia, as the moderator, and I would like to. Show my humble gratitude and thanks to Professor Dr. Amin Islam, sir. Uh, he told me about uh, this uh, webinar or this session, uh, the practical session of NVBO, uh, last two months ago. But uh, due to some uh, limitations of ourselves, we were uh, unable to uh, arrange uh, this session. But now uh, it's time to arrange, and hopefully, uh, I will share my ex from my personal experience from based on my knowledge. So hopefully, you will enjoy. And uh, please don't. Um, uh, hurt anything if you don't understand or uh, don't take my limitations uh, from my presentation. So thank you very much and thank you, Prof. Again for your um, nice introduction. And uh, dear listeners, we are going to initially 
the practical initially the conceptual session and after that we'll go uh, for the pr uh, practical session uh, the hands on the practical session and vivo uh, thank you very much uh, please give me uh, some time to share on uh, my screen Yeah, can you see my screen now? Uh, is it visible, dear listeners? Is it visible, Prof? Yes, yes, it's visible. Yeah, okay, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, our today's um, session is qualitative interview analysis by using NVivo. So uh, we will use the NVivo software. Normally, uh, we can analyze our interviews uh, through um, the manuals manually as well as uh, NVivo software, as well as we have some other uh, softwares we use in NVivo data analysis. So we'll go through the practical session later, but before that we have some uh, conceptual issues here. This is the, our prostering for uh, this live, uh, live session. Uh, this is the presentation outline here, uh, types of interviews, data saturation in qualitative research and softwares used in qualitative research, introduction to NVivo and practical session, and finally the uh, question and answer session. Okay, so uh, here normally we know that uh, we have two sessions. Uh, we have two research methodology here, qualitative and quantitative method. Normally in quantitative, we do a statistical analysis or some hypothetical uh, issues. But in qualitative research, we focus on more in-depth or more uh, explorative uh, issues here that uh, to explore the events or any situation more broadly uh, to our participants here. So uh, development of concept which helps us to understand social phenomena in natural setting, giving due emphasis to the meanings, expressions, and views of the participants. Uh, this is definition by the Pope and Mace in 1995. So this is the qualitative research. Normally we explore, we uh, want to explore any inherent issue, uh, what is happening or what is going to happen, why this is happening and what's the reason behind this and how we can solve this problem or uh, to solve or uh, to come up with the uh, solution. So we can use the qualitative research uh, in, in this regard. So yeah, quali uh, qualitative methods here, uh, you know, uh, snapshot here. So you can see the dimensions, uh, understanding context, under understanding the perception of the people, understanding interaction, what people say, what are the perception or the ex uh, experience um, or the perception or the viewpoints of the participants here. The common qualitative research design, normally we have a uh, total here, six uh, research design here, action research. Case study, uh, case study research, narrative research, eth ethnography, grounded theory, and we have another one, the phenomenology, uh, is near to case study. Um, so here, action research normally, what we do normally in action research, in action research, we do normally want to solve any practical issues or day-to-day -day activities in office work or maybe any other practical issues in office environment or working environment. And case study normally we explore anything, any personal or any events or any specific country issues or any specific phenomena event why this is happening, what are the reasons behind this is, are the issues. And narrative research, we also explore the issues more broadly. Ethnographic, normally we work uh, in ethnographic with an ethnic uh, people, ethnic group to explore uh, their views, their perception, their food habit, their uh, lifestyle, everything. Grounded theory, normally if there is not anything uh, in the research in their area or the research in the literature. So you want to explore, uh, we want to develop anything issue. So in that case, we normally, Use the grounded theory. The grounded theory normally takes uh, more time. Also, sometimes ethnographic research also uh, take more times two, three years, four years, five years. Even uh, sometimes it takes also three years, uh, ten years also in uh, ethnographic research. Normally, in qualitative research, what we do and how we collect data. Normally, we collect data from interviews based on our uh, observations, focus group, uh, and others. Uh, it means we take field notes uh, to collect data. So here normally what types of interviews there are different types of interviews normally uh, here three types of interviews here is structured semi structured and unstructured uh, three stage i stay for three uh, stages or types of interviews here normally in a structured interview a uh, structured interview is a question uh, quantitative uh, quantitative research method commonly employed in survey research the aim of this uh, research approach is to ensure that each interview is presented with exactly the same question in same order so normally we have the structured questionnaire here. We don't change uh, or we do not want to change anything in this uh, questionnaire format. Normally we can show, it's like a survey. We can show this questionnaire to our participants, to our respondents, uh, whatever they have answered, they can uh, put their answer, they can write their answer, or they can, ex uh, they can uh, explore their answer, or they can explain their answer. But we do not have uh, any 
point to us anything uh, based on their um, responses. Second one is that uh, the semi-structured interview, a semi-structured interview uh, denotes the interview whereby the interviewer poses a few predetermined questions but has considerable flexibility concerning the follow-up questions. Normally, we have also the question here in semi-structured interview, but what we do in a semi-structured question here is very flexible. You know that uh, in this method, we researcher have the opportunity to ask more questions based on the respondents answer as well as the based on the phenomenon based on the situation whatever he face, facing that uh, or something he got new uh, in uh, in the in his or her interview times so based on that uh, perception experience uh, the interviewer um, uh, can ask anything and for more uh, clarification more exploring the issues and unstructured interview normally we use this one uh, in as like uh, ethnographic research but unstructured interview we do not have any structured question yet uh, in any structured questionnaire in unstructured interview and unstructured uh, questionnaire or non uh, directive interview is an interview in which questions are not uh, pre arranged these non directive interviews are considered to be the opposite of the structured interview which offers a set of a standardized or a standardized questions here uh, say for an example here i want to meet prof uh, uh, prof amin uh, but i want to meet but i know how uh, why i want to meet with him but uh, he doesn't know why I want to meet him. But I have uh, the perception. I have the objectives. I have some uh, questions in my mind. So based on this, I uh, want to meet him. I do not have any uh, structured question here. So in the meantime, I can discuss with him. Maybe we can arrange uh, dinner or lunch. Maybe we can. In that case, I can uh, discuss with him. I I drive him to my entire objective to fill up my objectives uh, through our discussion. So I know that I have the question here in my mind something uh, i need to achieve or i need to um, achieve the goal i need to uh, fulfill my uh, goal so in that case uh, i have uh, the some questionnaire i can discuss i can uh, drive the discussion uh, uh, to achieve my goal and these are the three uh, types of interviews here structured semi structured and unstructured normally uh, in semi structured or structured interview here uh, we have a total uh, individual and focus group two types here in individual interviews, uh, it can be face to face, uh, it can be personal, uh, it can be phone call, it can be online. Now we, you, we can take interview in Zoom, uh, we can take interview Google Meet or any other online platform. Normally, I uh, hear that uh, we normally use email also. Uh, we email, we use WhatsApp online call or maybe mobile call or telephone call uh, to take interviews uh, in that case. But face to face interviews is more uh, better uh, and more uh, applicable or more uh, usable uh, in. Uh, interview uh, collection or data collection period the application of the multiple methods is called uh, triangulation which means or uh, harmonizes the way so that the close of one may be recompensed for by another one so in that case uh, normally we can uh, take interviews we can take uh, field notes we can take uh, notes here some take notes and some uh, other important uh, notifications or some other important uh, bullet point to during the interview session so here this is called that data triangulation method normally you can also use quality quantity to uh, triangulate your data you can uh, take field notes you can take uh, notes uh, you can take observation personal observation uh, during uh, the explanation uh, by the respondents or participants normally you can uh, uh, observe the way of expression the facial expression normally uh, you will see that there is a they're saying they're happy but their face is not happy uh, they're not express that well that happiness in their face. They have uh, too many workload. Maybe uh, their workload is uh, too heavy or too many. But in that terms of workload, uh, they do not have that uh, much more payment uh, in that case. So you can observe that uh, or this part. Sometimes I face that in my observation. I when I took interview for my PhD uh, thesis. So here I came to Bangladesh and I took interview that uh, they're saying uh, they're independent in uh, working uh, in their working their decision making, but. Uh, them mentioning but the inherent situation was that uh, their face and their expression somehow they mentioned that they are not independent they are not able to work independently because they are under some other people authority or higher authority that was the issues and last one is the here focus group normally a uh, special type of group it, uh, in terms of purpose size compensation and procedure here it can be different uh, cluster different uh, segments here in terms of purpose, uh, based on your purpose, based on size, comp composition, and procedures, maybe in terms of cluster, higher authority, mid level employee, uh, lower level uh, employee here. Typically composed of four to 12 participants who are unfamiliar with each other. Uh, they have certain characteristics uh, in common that relate to the topic.
maybe you can arrange a session for uh, four to twelve person but they don't uh, they know each other maybe they know each other uh they know each other they're familiar maybe if you arrange uh with uh, three different groups of people here maybe they will be uh, known each other but uh, they don't know who will be there here or in the situation so that uh, maybe if, uh, there are two or three cluster of people so if you have any question any problem in that case uh, you can solve or uh, you can get a uh, solid idea after uh, their uh, discussion completing their discussion here they have certain characteristics in common that relate to the topic here focus group is a data collection procedure the purpose of other group introductions usually to reach a uh, consensus uh, provide uh, recommendations or make decisions among alternatives here and focus group uh, pays attention to the perceptions feelings and manner of thinking and has a uh, rather narrow purpose is not intended to develop consensus in the focus group you'll uh, get a uh, just a uh, conclusion or concluding remarks after uh, the discussion of the participants here focus group uh, make uh, use of qualitative data here data that provide insight into the attitudes uh, perception and opinions of the party uh, participants from discussion and observations uh, in natural environment uh, where participants are influencing and influenced by others researchers serve as a moderator listener observer and analyzer using inductive process here so the main um, role uh, key, uh, key role is performed by the researcher so he's a moderator he make the coordination cooperation he make interaction listener he uh, listen he take uh, note downs everything and analyze and he make the concluding remarks uh, so here in qualitative research uh, we have data saturation normally uh, this is very well known in qualitative research uh, that data saturation in every literature in every qualitative research or in a study we claim normally the researcher claim that we reached in data saturation process but it's still uh, when I um, prepare or wrote my uh, methodological paper, you'll find uh, my methodology paper in my Google Scholar uh, profile, a qualitative case, a systematic qualitative case, a study data collection and web analysis and saturation in that paper. Uh, so I uh, will find uh, in that paper, uh, before that paper, I tried to search something. I found that the previous researcher, they mentioned that though researcher mentioned that they achieved uh, saturation, but it's still there is no evidence how they achieved saturation so in my paper then i thought too it would be a good uh, sources uh, for the references that how i achieved uh, the data saturation because i intended to this paper uh, only that i had some uh, publications from my thesis it's now uh, 14 empirical papers already so i have still another total 17 uh, 17 empirical papers for my thesis so including total 26 so i intended to my methodological paper as i have too many papers uh, from my thesis in different segments I uh, segment uh, different parts. So then I thought it would be uh, better if I had a methodology paper so that someone in future that maybe asks me that how did you um, uh, produce too many papers? What was your data methodology analysis or situational procedures? Uh, so I prepared that paper and I showed that argument that uh, in my paper, uh, three stages of data saturation one is inform information redundancy and reduction of course or notes in NBO saturation or NBO data analysis software analysis and another one uh, interesting is that referring to the other respondents without knowing anything uh without knowing anything about the responses uh by the participants that some of the respondents they referred me to another uh, respondents uh that um you uh, do did you collect data from this uh, this person then i mentioned that oh yeah already i have collected data from uh, those respondents or those person then uh, the participant says okay so if you have already made that one or collect data from uh, those person, I think uh, you already get enough information. So if we don't say anything or we don't add anything, in that case, um, I think it's also okay for you. So in that case, the reviewer asked me, so uh, how would we understand that uh, they somehow they wanted to escape the situation or escape the interviews? Then I uh, argued that in my paper that uh, if uh, the participants, the new participants, they wanted or intended uh, to escape the interviews uh, they did not refer me to uh, previous uh, participants or respondents even they entertained me they provided uh, gave me some um institutionary some um uh, gifts item from uh, their cooperation from their institution organizations and some uh, good publications uh, their publications from that institutions to add uh, literature to add in my uh, data, uh, in my data findings so that was the third uh, one so you will find this uh, data saturation so it still is confusing to us that how we uh, achieve the saturation so i argued that these three stages of saturation in my paper so it can be different it can be different in different contexts i uh, and or i uh, different country contexts or a different field so 
uh, we can apply or that one that uh, or maybe if we have another evidence or any other or more evidence we can also explore in quality paper in methodological journal so that it will add the contribution to the existing literature here that uh, here in the data saturation process here so here data saturation uh, entails bringing new participants uh, continually into the study until the data set is completed as indicated by data replication or redundancy normally we say data redundancy depicting the respondents after getting normally we after uh, taking interviews from uh, 8 to 10 12 same cluster people uh, in the same criteria 8 to 12 people so we get some uh, similar responses in that case uh, the respondents say similar thing uh, similar answer similar issues by different way different um, uh, language using different language but uh, there is a redundancy of information and data saturation is reached when the researcher gathers data to the point of diminishing returns so nothing new is being added to your data bank in data bank or in data set or in data cluster when you do not have anything new in that case and uh Charmas, uh 2003 explains that a situation calls for pitching new into the categories already uh device thus data section is considered the flagship validity of quality research here and a standard that means with the ontological and epistemological foundations of quality receivers and this total uh, at all 2006 explained data saturation as the point of data collection and data analysis when information produces little or no changes to the code book here with the variations containing some additional new codes and uh, refinements of course our uh, definitions and uh, second is that the thematic aggression the positive whole no new themes are derived from the data bank So these are the softwares used normally in research in vivo at last uh, 10 i spaces cbcm uh, pls uh, panel data here normally these are the uh, few uh, software analytical uh, views e views time series analysis do uh, grass method here uh, mgrass uh, arl ardl normally we use this one where uh, these analytical uh, tools or analysis in research these are the software here in vivo at last 10 in qualitative spaces cbcm these are the procedures here uh, time series and egress bar in quantitative quantitative here these uh, are the softwares here and software in qualitative normally at last 10 uh and vivo provels and uh quercos here uh max cuda uh didos here web uh, qga hyperresource and uh, transana and events i uh, uh quick uh, f4 analysis and annotations and data gray data gray now is recently added here so for more details you'll find this and uh, the following link uh, here uh details of the software here in the um, attached link here so uh introduction to uh, nvivo normally nvivo is a software uh so normally we use this software in data coding initially we can uh, open node create open node after that we can cluster with uh, sub nodes or with uh, some nodes and in the same category sub theme and then we can prepare uh, the theme and sub category or theme here uh these are the basic guidelines here practical session in the introduction session uh you can uh, get the guideline how to uh initially uh, run uh, the nvivo 10 or nvivo 11 12 software here so you can uh, download the guidelines uh, through uh, this link uh this is the issues here so uh this is the the analytical session here the conceptual session are you getting our um analysis here so after that we'll go uh, to the uh, the practical sessions so please wait for a while uh, let me start my software so that uh, i can share you from the beginning so uh, please uh, prof if you have anything you want to share so maybe uh, you can share or you can uh, if you have any issues from the respondents in the live so maybe you can share in the meantime uh, i can go through the uh, software thank you very much welcome i think uh, participants uh, thank you very much those of you who have joined the session uh, uh, Please just uh, wait for a few minutes uh, so that Dr. Kasa Alam can open uh, the software and we'll start showing you the practical uh, session. Okay. And uh, once you start the practical session, if you have any question, you can put the question in the uh, chat box and uh, later he will uh, answer them, inshallah. So, can you see my software? It's opening now, it's running. It's can you opening, see? Yeah. yeah, okay. It's opening, yes. Yeah, it's opening. I think it will work.
So participants, if you have the software with you, you may open and follow. If you don't have, uh, don't yeah. worry. The video is going to be available in the YouTube channel. So later you can practice. Possibly you can see it now. And later you can practice uh, by looking at uh, the video uh, available in the YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for, for your time and dear participants. Thank you very much for your uh, patience here. So as you uh, see that that I initially I opened uh, the software here. So we have the some issues here: file, home, create, external data, analyze, query, explore, layout, view, everything here. In and we were twelve version. You will get how to analyze. I have some guidelines here, but maybe. I'm unable uh, to share here as it is in online. So maybe you can uh, normally uh, ask Google. Uh, you will find uh, in vivo some uh, guidelines, some uh, manuals, how to start, how to analyze. Even though uh, if you let me share one issue here. So uh, let me check with the one um, uh, software, uh, one website so that uh, you can guide, uh, you can download uh, the manuals from here. here. We'll see that the forums and vivo uh, by qsr.com here. Can you see this one? Uh, if you find this one, you can check this uh, link uh, forums and vivo by qsr.com. You can uh, sign up, you can register here. They sometimes arrange uh, some sessions, uh, free uh, practical sessions, learning sessions um, here. So you can join uh, through uh, the Zoom link here. They'll provide uh, the Zoom link if you register. So I already registered for one session. Maybe it will be on 18 October. So I will also join and that session to learn to explore uh, more issues uh, to enhance my experience and my capabilities there. So you can uh, check this one. Can you uh, see this uh, and before this website? Uh, is it visible to all of you? Is it visible, Prof? The forums and vivo uh, qsr.com. So you can uh, download some documents here, some guidelines, calendar, clubs, members, uh, search here. So here. They have too many documents here, so you can uh, download from these, and also even you can uh, search in Google. So you'll find some uh, materials. Even you can search in YouTube. YouTube normally uh, some uh, you will find uh, very little, uh, small videos, maybe ten minutes, twelve minutes, fifteen minutes videos. Some of the videos are more than one hour, two hours, and three hours. So you'll get that practical session uh, from that videos also. But here, if you uh, register here, you will find some interesting uh webinar there they have some session so you can um, register and i think you will enjoy that session if you register uh, here so you will enjoy the session so here initially uh if you open the software you'll find here new project open project it means open project here if you have existing project in this uh in the software in the nbo uh, software and you can see here some of the qsr international qsr international here some guidelines here uh see here you have some guidelines news here you'll find also some videos of positioning and be able to support a, uh, existing quality census activities here. A community video uh, and some connecting libraries. This is the old version. So in the latest version, you will find more videos here. ICB discuss commons and people support tips, guidelines here, QSR International. Uh, there are some tips and guidelines here. So uh, in that case, if you want to uh, open a new project, so in that case, uh, you can click on the new project. Just click on the new project. You can. Uh, right side, you can click the right button of your mouse. So you, you can title here, write your name, what you, do you want to write, and description if you want to put anything, what is it? A uh, very little one, two sentences, maybe 50 words, 70 words, 100 words within one. So, file name, if you want to browse from your uh, desktop or Dropbox, you can also uh, click that one here. Uh, you can also uh, enhance from your PC or include here uh, from your uh, PC or from your uh, desktop. So, you can write, save, and something like this. Then if you write something that's okay after that you will click and okay and save so it will automatically save in your desktop also in your uh, project so here uh, if you see that i have two recent projects this is uh, not by me uh, environment change uh, down is, is and this is maybe their um the preliminary supporting um their supporting project uh, it was uh, maybe a sample project uh, how they did that one but this afternoon i uh, created this one the sharia governance of islamic banks this one uh, was the title in my PhD thesis, the development of a uh, centralized Sharia governance framework for Islamic banks in Bangladesh. Uh, it was my PhD thesis. So uh, I um, will show you some issues here that so that I uh, will uh, get some benefit here. So here, this, are my, this is my uh, project here. I already opened that one. So here open, uh, this is the file. Go through here, refresh, uh, external, external, internal means this is in, in your internal projects already in your software. 
external means uh, memos and frameworks matrix frameworks you can create and matrix memos you can um, you can uh, explore uh, from your desktop here so here you can create uh, external uh, documents or external here create external data just see here the create memo external documents you can create audio video framework you can generate audio video from here your desktop these are the external data this is the analyzing procedure query explore layout and view i will show you everything uh, here uh, side by side uh, color color scheme everything here so initially please check that here external data you want to upload some documents to analyze normally in uh, manual analysis normally we do one by one uh, we do one by one one analysis after another one but here if you have initially the all if you uh, add the all interviews here so individual or separate documents so if initially you need to maybe create general course uh, notes themes of them so it will be from you based on your question here so you can do this and uh, if you have initially the theme sub theme or maybe clustered for different categories so second one it will be easier for you third one fourth one and after that all interviews it will be easier so you can uh, put the findings of the general coding uh, based uh, in, in that specific class or in that specific uh, specific uh, groups or in a specific uh, sub theme or themes so here let me share some uh, documents here i import you can also uh, import here pdf data set audios video picture memos you can uh, import everything here but in and we were 12 i will find that uh, they have uh, the transcription system here uh, transcribing system uh, if you uh, upload audio it will automatically transcribe you need to uh, subscribe that one for also you need to sub subscribe also you can upload video uh, you they will automatically transcribe for you uh, if you have the proper pronunciation of that language uh, english language so that uh, you can also need to subscribe for that uh, services so let me check here okay here these are the documents from my desktop so let me explore uh here intent some issues here okay mm, here see the my final transcript here okay so let me check here uh, i have some uh, documents here okay see i have uploaded here so click ok button here you'll find that automatically it will be uploaded in in the software system now uh, see it's not responding because uh, too many apps and uh, is ongoing here starting yeah let please wait Guys, yeah, uh, already uploading here. Yeah, see, it's automatically here up, up, uh, uploaded here. So created on uh, references here notes. Here the interviews here. Uh, created by modified modified one here. Okay. So you, if you click on internal, uh, internal, then maybe you'll find here notes, here the sources, uh, classification, uh, queries, reports, and uh, if you allow me to um, include uh, my research question here, uh, let me check. Yeah, final question for my thesis. Okay, I already uploaded here. Okay. So here uh, you can see that I already uh, opened uh, one uh, respondents interview. Coding summary by node report. See, you can see the node reports coding here. Reports here, queries. Uh, if you click on the reports, you'll find the reports coding how many codes I have initially made here. The sources uh, from which source uh, you have how many uh, notes, initial notes. Uh, here, the notes here, the references, the quotation, how many quotation you have generated from uh, uh, one uh, particular interview. <coughs> so, here uh, I opened that one. So, here the sources. Uh, so, this one is I already opened okay um yeah this is the second one initially you need to click edit so uh this is the uh, first issue let me open my question here yeah uh 
okay so what i did in my phd thesis initially i click up my first question here this is my questionnaire interview checklist here this is my first questionnaire second third fourth and sub question here under these main questions so i have here initially three main questions i clicked on the three main question cluster here the reasons for behind the differences mechanism in the sharia governance framework and policies uh, in islamic banks so uh, maybe you can just click your first question here the main issues from the question here so initially uh, you can create here create the notes see the first one and this is for your first heading it would be easier for you to classify or cluster your answers so that when you take interview when you took interview you ask the respondents the question sequentially or maybe changing by order maybe uh, some of them you maybe change order during the interview session or based on our uh, respondent responses so in that case uh, you can initially just put your question here maybe you can uh, color here um aggregate here you can different color okay so this is my first question after that based on my question here here are the findings i try to um, here okay uh here see the notes here the first one is that here uh, my first question so in this one uh, this one you can uh, create also another sub note here see control shift plus and if you shift another one you can see automatically another one you want to check that one maybe you can say that the significance significance of the should a governance is the short form okay aggregate with the child theme main theme so you can also color here wait one okay see here we have that one the main question i prepared uh, the theme based on my question here you can see that one here initially uh in my thesis we try uh, to explore the reasons behind the difference in the mechanism of the governance framework in the practices here uh, i try to explore the definition the significance of the sharia governance uh, the current practices internal policies structure so you can also cluster this one in operational procedures in your policies in different different cluster and based on this uh, you can put child notes in initial notes or references to make linkage uh, with the um, with that uh, heading and sub subheading here that uh, and second one is that expected duties and sub uh, sharia board islam banks how they perform their roles function uh, these are the issues third one this is related to the theory uh, there are there any pressure uh, in that case this is uh, concerning the institutional theory uh, here are the appointment criteria their procedure uh, so here i prepared initial questions and i prepared that one uh, from the questionnaire we prepared uh, the theme and sub theme uh, from the based on the findings here see so here uh, you can prepare that on another one in in that uh, uh, cluster okay new one uh, you can click another one okay so this is the c second one so now you uh, prepare the uh, theme sub theme uh, initially based on your question you can prepare or you can initially develop some theme uh, sub theme to cluster based on your findings and also you can uh, make or uh, summarize in that case so initially now if we check for that one the okay see that uh, this is um, the regulatory aspects here they responded one okay um, see that Sharia government is not uh, only required this is the significance of my question here uh, we mentioned that the significance of the sharia governance sharia governance is required not only for the islamic banks but also for the all is the financial initiatives so governance or good governance or compare governance is applicable to almost all organizations it's requirement for proper functioning of a public uh, limited company a public limited company is owned by thousands of shareholders but not um but um cannot be operated them uh, directly they elect a board their director board of directors so what is the meaning here uh, my question was that initial this is connected or interlink with my the first question here and we can see why sharia governance is important so you can just uh no need to uh two 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 main issues here yeah, you can see that just you can copy this one just uh copy and see copy and or just uh, and paste it here the significance or just you can highlight and put your right button of mouse and see here it will be automatically there so here see uh here i have already one uh, point here the regarding significance of the sharia governance here i found one matter here one is issues second one is that say for example this is also related to my first question the significance of the sharia issues so i also click that one and put it to the significance of the sharia governance this is from the one uh respondents interview so if we see the second one so maybe uh let me check this one oh, sorry so now uh, see that uh, we have already heard uh, from one interview two notes or two references two quotations from uh, for one uh, issues uh, in this case so we already see here two references from one issues here so uh, now you want to view 
our highlight this. See that the list of the view here. You can see the coding strips here, coding all nodes coding here. See uh, nodes here. See uh, we have the nodes here in the right side. You can also highlight whatever you have uh, coded from this part here. See in different colors. We have the already this part already coded uh, as references um, in uh, quantitative uh, in qualitative in NBB analysis process. Okay, so this is the one. So let's check with the second one. So if you have that another one, let's see that this is the important uh, for the significance of the Sharia governance. This is the insignificance. So this say for example, this is the significance regarding this one. So just you clip that one. So here see that we have total three references here. So here are three references from two different sources from maybe uh, in that case, uh, when you ask three or four or five, six, seven, eight or nine respondents, then maybe you'll get similar responses. So maybe you can stop asking uh, these questions why significance uh, Sharia governance is significant. You can skip this question. You can go through the another one, another uh, procedure. So uh, this is the issue. So you can just cluster. Second one is that uh, if it is related to the second one, just copy and paste there. You can also highlight here, view, highlight uh, in different color, uh, coding all notes. You see the coding all notes here. You can also uh, coding in different color. Uh, right side here, different colors. You can also highlight in different, different colors. Uh, see. So you can also generate another one for the second question. Maybe if you want, you can also uh, generate one, another one. Uh, maybe uh, see for example uh, um, propose Dr. Kausar, uh, participants are requesting you to go a bit slow. Uh, they can uh, really follow you. Please, please go uh, a bit slow. Can you please? Uh, okay, yeah, please. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Thank you. So this is the second issue. You can uh, create another notes here, uh, parent notes here, also new notes. Uh, by clicking this one, just say for example, okay, uh, the um, audit, sorry, audit, actually, it should be a AU audit process, PLCE, sorry, audit process. Okay, this is the second one. You can uh, click here in one by one, one by one. Uh, you can uh, develop here. <coughs> okay, another one. So for example, here roles are uh, roles of BI double FBI are different BODI reports are really related with actually a governance framework. Yeah. So these are the issues you can uh, create question one by one here. Uh, so these are the findings, these based on the findings. Uh, one issues here we have one line or one point. It can be useful uh, in two or three cases also. So in that case, you can also use same references here for two or three cases here see this one or this one uh, and maybe uh, okay you can also use this one for different cluster esc just copy and paste here from two different sources so one by one you can just finish go through your uh, desktop you should read carefully whether uh, the point is relevant with your respondents, which part and which question here, which findings it relates. You can connect with that. So it would be easier for you to connect your findings uh, one by one in one cluster to another one. Uh, see this one uh, you can put there so you'll find these notes these are the issues here and you can use so based on the references so when you finish all of your coding uh maybe i have total 17 here so i coded everything one by one i finished i made prediction interconnection um, my findings with my uh sub teams with my question here i created the question here i put this uh here okay so for example, okay, so I put this one, I finish everything with my related uh, related to my findings. And I finish my one, that one initially say, for example, this is the first one I completed. So I close this one, I close second one, third one, fourth one, whatever the issue. So if you close all of the issues here, you'll find is that, okay.
okay so uh say for example if you finish all of your coding here procedure so okay just yes, you can see also individually here from one uh see that uh, here we have total 17 or 10 interviews here so from first one say for example say that i have here four notes uh, regarding the four themes or four uh, main or sub themes here the four questions here i got the 10 references here four here maybe 15 17 so i showed that uh, i reached the saturation point and i analyzed these interviews during the session as well as uh, the analyzing procedure here uh, somehow i got here this point or this point here this point i got too much uh, references here from these or these response after that uh, this this point uh, the notes or the findings are uh, going slower a little bit slower uh, the uh, codes are minimizing so in that case uh, i just finished that one that is uh, going to be a I uh, assume that I assume that I restored the situation process as well as I have uh, put that justification of the responding uh, of the, the participants, uh, the referring system, and uh, the information redundancy. When I took the interview, I noticed their responses, uh, findings uh, in that case. So after coding that, when you see, for example, these are the notes here. So now you uh, can analyze your uh, data here. Uh, analyze here so you can already you have the notes course categories here everything is here you can explore your data you can make chart this is the advanced version i can uh, generate from here a notes source and create say for example here uh, next uh, see all sources finish you can generate one c uh, here you can generate uh, one here uh, please wait yes If some notes here uh, generating notes the figure demographic figure here um, the issues oh sorry So uh, from your uh, that notes or from that course, you can uh, the best option or the best way is that you can copy all of your uh, notes and references based on the sub cluster or sub question here. So that uh, when you write your thesis based on your question here, uh, the research main question, question one, question two, or question three. In that case, just you can uh, make separate heading for your question one for question two, and you can cluster or make summarize your findings. You can use the references, uh, the references as a notes here, and you can. Uh, cluster as uh, five or six references or same issues in, in that case so i'll share another paper uh, my paper one one paper with you uh let me check uh that i have copy you can copy uh from all of your findings uh from notes uh from your uh software here from this software uh just uh, this is the notes I think I, uh, I did not save this part. Uh, so what I did, uh, please wait. I have closed already, unfortunately. Uh, please wait. Maybe I do not have anything here. So just uh, from the documents, whatever I have imported, uh, please wait uh, for maybe one or two minutes. So just uh, when you click uh, one or two here. OK. So what you can do, you can uh, click on the notes. Yeah, okay, these are the references. So what you can do, just uh, you can click on this part. Okay, so for example, uh, let me create uh, some uh, instant few quotes for you. Uh, significance, significance. Of schedule governance. <coughs> so, so, for example, this is the notes. Sorry. Uh, these are the points I have. Um, sorry, uh, notes here. Sorry. Uh, these are the points here we have uh, created. Here we have one sources here, as you saw in the previous. Uh, uh previously that here uh, we have maybe 10 sources from the 10 respondents maybe 12 or maybe 15 or 13 or maybe uh, 20 or 40 respondents whatever we have maybe you will get of uh, responses valid responses or valid valid explanation here so you can just click on this one 
whatever you have the findings so what are the headings here that uh, you can copy here uh, the significance the significance of the just copy uh, and you can prepare a separate what file for your uh, better convenient for your um, record purpose so it will be easier to uh, write uh, write up your thesis or write up your article uh, let me check with that one and uh, just uh, click on the word file you can uh, also um, explore data here i forgot uh, this year uh, new models you can develop models here um, you can also chart uh, based on your uh, chart notes coding uh, chart notes coding battery based value here charts you can generate one coding sources here it will uh, generate automatic coding um, by a source coding by none of the coding for uh, a node here coding by attribute value for a node coding by a node attribute value for multiple nodes here different cluster you can do that every by one uh, this it will uh, no here i do not have anything so it will not uh, go back with that uh, not work with that so just you can uh, open a uh, word file my computer is hang on please wait uh, so what we can do um okay so prepare uh one uh, separate file uh, left uh, let's see so for example this is the significance of the sharia governance here so in, in this point you can make it a heading so in this point whatever you have the findings in the software uh maybe here we have the only one maybe here we have uh 20 30 40 you will find here that this is the from uh respondent one reference one maybe you will get find four or five references from a a single participant or respondent so after that referencing one you will find the second one third one fourth one uh in your data referencing and finding so in that case uh i uh, i will share i'm sharing you with you that uh my coding here uh let uh, this is my course categories and themes of thesis uh, this was my initial coding uh whatever i had uh i coded uh, in through in your software yeah see the initial code category theme here i have that initial uh themes uh importance uh, under the theme mm, my sub theme here current categories yes see uh this is the importance of the significance of the sharia government see the follow sharia rules why it is important i make the another point in the uh, point here under the point the uh, importance of the sharia governance framework see here uh significance of the sharia governance here you can uh, create another one why it is important maybe to follow here to follow uh sharia principles sharia principles uh this is the first issue here i had uh, the first uh, one why it is important second one maybe you can create another one what i created uh to implement simply amendment sharia issues sharia uh principles sharia principles so here i had that another one uh if you see that one just uh let me check that one here i have maybe i found that another one maybe why it is important uh, to enhance customer which enhance customer trust and confidence these are the issues that okay you can aggregate with here with color and uh, no problem see uh, here i have the in the under significance i have total three sub points or four five six seven points what are the different roles what is your in multiple states so if uh, we look at the word file here see in the uh, left side here this is the my main uh, the theme was that importance of the sharia governance why it was important follow sharia rules sharia compliance business purpose at safety customs and accomplish uh, policy responsibility duty these were the issues i had uh, created a uh, sub theme sub category here the current operational practices of the sharia governance here the regulation regulatory difference uh, policy weakness problems the decision making procedure here so based on this here this is see the follow sharia rules here and the internal expert i had the three cluster of uh, respondents these are the expert category here i have the four references coded 2.5 average here see the first one references as per the islamic have to follow the islamic sharia this is the first code Se second one is crucial that the mac ma must comply with the sharia 
the muslim have the weakness of the sharia then fourth one is that uh, so uh, for the religious point of the view it is the same practices at the business point of the view it is important uh, to ensure the sharia and ensure the sharia governance framework so these were the issues initial issues i have the coding uh, for four points from one second one is that uh, the follow sharia principle ex, uh, internal expert here expert four expert number respondent number four i have two references here whatever you note uh, initially you will quote and uh, the references will be here that see third one i have five references here see yeah here uh, total uh, five references here second one expert two here i have five references one two three four five so this is the issues that uh, the my first theme was that one why should your governance is important what is sharia governance this is uh, this was the issue so uh, these are the findings I have plastered here. I make uh, the initial uh, references. So what I did, I put all. I did not put all of the references in my paper because if I put all of the references in my paper, it will be very big. So whatever uh, what I did, I just uh, put the most relevant responses here uh, in uh, my writing purpose. Uh, please let me share my published paper regarding this uh, issue. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think uh, uh, this is my methodology paper. If you have a look, you can uh, download it from uh, our website or from Google Scholar, or you can search me uh, in the research gate if you are unable to download. This is my methodology paper. I got too many revisions on this paper uh, from the my respected reviewers, uh, editor, associate editor. Um, this is the my methodology paper. So these are the guidelines. If you can see this one, uh, but I am unable to share it. It's an introduction to NVivo. You can uh, download it uh, from the Google NVivo 10 uh, qualitative here. Um, they have some quality data analysis using NVivo. This also um, by Hellion and Dixon. Hellion Dixon. You can download. Maybe you can search in Google also. Uh, this is the 11 one. Uh, they have the guidelines pro Windows and these are the issues these are the this is my papers uh what i am talking with is the so why sharia is sharia governance pretty much important for islamic bank see uh this is my paper so uh this was the paper that i was uh, published already with mrl one though it's not a scopus index journal but it's uh the open access uh journal published by uh thailand uh one of the banking university of thailand um department of banking something like this asian journal of economics uh and banking so uh, this was the introduction uh, this was uh, my literature review uh, here the methodology a uh, theoretical framework here uh, the methodology part this is uh, the respondent cluster here regulators three studio practitioners nine and experts uh, five i reached uh, my saturation point here uh, in five points here in uh, nine uh, participants here in uh, three participants already i told with you that uh, this is the findings here the study claim the situation can form the different question using what questions uh, i argued that uh, quality research also can be cushioned uh question can be formed with the what question mark uh this is the along with why and how and the three is a position second and different position yes see uh situation in different position i uh, three responded for regulatory nine for the study scholars and officers and five for the experts Concerning the issues, uh, these were the uh, clusters of the uh, background cluster of the response. So this was the theme. See, uh, the Sharia governance and its uh, significance. What is the Sharia governance? You follow Sharia rules, Sharia compliance, uh, business purpose. This was my main theme. Under this theme, I prepared. Uh, we have clustered this. These are the sub theme or uh, sub categories. And after that, we have the coding and notions here. See. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is the issue. Um, governance definition yeah you can see that uh, initially i have argued with the um, the follow the sharia governance or sharia rules see here the cluster uh, okay uh, this one the first one the as per the year uh, in addition to sharia compliance significant com uh, component of the sharia compliance uh, why is the most important or significant component in sharia governance so these are the clusters see that here uh, we have some uh, uh, respondents but uh, here maybe I have a five or six. Uh, maybe I can increase it more or uh, visible uh, and large. So see he, here I have the only three. I put the three reference or three quotations here. But maybe I have uh, here I had uh, five, six, seven, more than eight. But 
I did not put all of the references here uh, to make it uh, more um, uh, better, uh, to make it more suitable uh, so that uh, it will not be a very big paper here, uh, the issues. And second one is that the respondents, I mentioned that one, two here, three respondents, uh, they opined that the Sharia governance system plays an essential role to ensure the suitable practices for Islamic regulators ensure here. So based on this uh, arguments and respondents, I put here the below down the, see the below down, below down the respondents here. I put only one and second issue is that here uh, I put some uh, justification here see only one I put based on these arguments I put only one uh, the best more suitable one or the best uh, suitable one which means that discover your all of your discussions maybe uh, one respondent he explained all of the issues so this is the best uh, suitable or appropriate one to explain your issues uh, so you can use that one uh, no need to use uh, maybe five or six uh, respondents opinion or references in that case you just highlight here see that one two three uh, maybe a, a, a here a five six seven or four but you can mention the respondents here the number so that it would be easier for you so for the reviewers also that they can easily understand so most of the respondents uh explored or expressed their opinion uh, regarding the issues but uh the the authors here put just only see i only put only two but here i mentioned how many here I mentioned here three but i did not put all of the issues here so i here uh, make uh, the linkage with my findings that according to the references here and finally i come out with the conclusion so this was a basic issue but you uh, please copy and paste all of your um, findings all of your notes and references uh heading by heading here see the heading here second one and uh, put it in your heading so that it will be suitable for you and it will be easier for you to write your um, findings and discussion findings part especially later maybe you can uh, put a justification uh, you can put references uh the previous studies and justify your findings with the prior studies if you had any references in different context or in your study context so you can uh, make justification in the middle uh, of your writing or after completing your uh, findings part see here the pressures from that this is the heading i put it here this is the typical part this is the compliance quality and performance uh, here another question this is my second question what are the problems faced by the SSB banker these were the problems so here i uh, mentioned the problems are faced by the different governance framework and its mechanism it mechanism means its practice is different bodies here see the practices here non-compliance here the practices what are the problems here in practice non-compliance issue knowledge gap here limitations guidelines lack of the uh, manpower these are the problems in the existing practices and problems of the SSB regulators, Sharia Department, Executives, Board of Directors. What are the problems? Uh, these are the body, key bodies or key authorities in the Sharia governance mechanism. So what you can do, uh, you can uh, put it uh, some uh, subheadings. Uh, this is the importance of central Sharia governance framework. Uh, why uh, there is requisite in central Sharia governance? Because Bangladesh is practicing a decentralized practices. So and this is the main heading. Uh, what are the reasons for no absence of a comprehensive uh, Sharia governance framework? It's already published here. I mean, I explored the reasons why uh, we do not have any governance framework here, lack of uh, inexperienced people, uh, quality intention of the different regulatory authorities, bodies, or different stakeholders, knowledge gap, culture, government policy, lack of a standard of business environment. These are the issues. So it will be easier for you if you copy and paste here in a word file. So you can easily uh, write your findings part based on your um, theme, based on your discussions, based on your uh, part, uh, part one, part two, and part three. So this was the basic issues uh, from my side regarding the analysis here. I mentioned that, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, you can also save after 15 minutes, 10 minutes in and people software. What I did mistake, I did not save that uh, previous one. And if you want, you can see uh, the coding part here. Sorry. Yeah, you can see the coding part here uh, that we highlighted. All notes, whatever you have, this is in the notes. Uh, you can also, Uh, see it will automatically highlight it whatever you have completed so you can see which part you have uh, coded or not so all that are it's better to complete one by one so that it would be easier to complete all of that the first one uh, and second one would be difficult for you to initially generate um, the themes and things to classify and make connection or linkage because um, uh, you need to think you need to more focus on initial uh, theme uh, and development, theme development. And later from the third and fourth one, it will be easier. Just you can open, you can uh, make cluster. You can make uh, connection, interconnection with the themes and with the uh, sub themes here. Uh, you can see uh, here.
so these are the issues and this is the basic uh, issue from my side uh, this is um, the end of the presentation here the practical session uh, so if you have any questions or any queries can you please prof uh, i don't see anything i cannot uh, see anything here so uh, if you see that uh, there are the questions uh, please uh, let me know Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Kasyalom, for the presentation. Uh, we have a few questions. Uh, number one is how to determine the sample size for qualitative research? Uh, okay, thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, normally, uh, we uh, depends are based on uh, your uh, respondents or your area. Normally, uh, in a qualitative research, uh, there are some criteria that um, how many respondents is enough for a qualitative research normally in a specific criteria in a specific group normally if you say that mid-level management or maybe regulators or maybe sharia practitioners in my cases or maybe accountants or maybe auditors in a specific cluster you can uh, normally take 10 to 12 respondents uh, is enough uh in, in this case uh, is enough for a individual uh qualitative study you can take also more 30 40 no nowadays uh people are more focusing on more respondents 30 40 but uh normally a sample uh size is 10 uh normally two people also enough for a quality which is even i found that five respondents also enough but you need to justify uh why uh, you collected 10 or 5 15 40 interviews uh 40 interviews whether you have reached the saturation point or not this is the main uh basic point issue or main issues is that whether uh your findings have the redundancy or not so if you have the redundancy uh, you have reached the saturation level, no new findings in your data bank, so you can stop your uh, data. But normally, 10 to 15 is enough for a single quality study. But nowadays, people are taking uh, 30, 40, 50. But normal range is 8 to highest. I saw uh, the references, uh, the uh, methodological uh, professors, they used a 60, highest 60. Okay. Uh, there's also one question related to this, uh, about the Sunny Inusa. Uh, he's asking that uh, he has three companies in his sample and if you take five from each company so i think it's going to be 15. so is it possible to use in vivo in that case uh yeah can uh, 50 respondents also can 50 60 respondents also can you can use in vivo but uh, one five. 15 one five five yeah, 15 one. oh yeah can yeah. I, I in my analysis i already showed that i have three cluster respondents one is regulator another one is sharia practitioners those who are directly related with the implementation and another one is the expert researchers or practice or uh, renowned bankers though those who are already retired so i made that cluster but uh, you can uh, uh, and i took interview from uh, six islamic banks central bank and other authorities so uh, here five or 15 banks or 15 respondents from uh, three different cluster it no, would not be any problem you can use uh, and vivo even though it's 15 uh, company, 15 respondents, you can also use, but you can just uh, use the synonym or acronym or a different name or different code uh, for your respondents uh, because it's the very significant issue in quality research. Respondents, um, privacy, their privacy, maybe their job security or other issues, it's very uh, significant. So don't use the respondent's name or their institution, just maybe what I did. Uh, if you want to see, uh, just let me show one issue. I already stopped here. Maybe uh, you can, I use that Islamic banks, Islamic banks, uh, I use the regulators, I use experts. So you can use it's a uh, bank or it's a um, consumer organization or it's a corporation, any other corporation you can cluster in that way, but uh, don't write uh, your respondent's name. You can use respondent one, RP one, respondents two, uh, three, four, five, cluster that one. It would be easier for you, no problem with uh, the number of respondents. Okay, then the next question I put it on the screen, uh, Brother Abraham. Yeah, how to generate models? How to generate yeah, models? Yeah, okay. Uh, in generation, you can just um, when you finish your analyzation, you just you click on the models. Um, you click on the models, it you'll find uh, some um, picture, uh, glossy picture, uh, picture with some keywords with the keywords. So uh, it will automatically generate it. Uh, you can just copy and paste to your uh, word. For direct uh, in Nvivo 12, if you purchase Nvivo 12, uh, Nvivo 12 paid version, uh, you will find uh, there are some uh, specific or um, uh, basic guidelines. How to this one uh, in Nvivo 12 uh, in the latest version? Maybe you will get another Nvivo uh, version 13 very soon, hopefully. So you can also they have their guidelines, so you can also follow that one if you face any problem. But initially, you should uh, 
code uh, your uh, respondents, your participants' interviews. Then maybe you can go one by one. Okay. Uh, the next question is uh, basically the uh, Abdullahi Ali Adan. He's asking after we made notes based based on the questions, then we directly copy and paste into the word. Is that enough? Uh, you can copy and paste enough, but if you make it in NBBO, copy and paste also enough, no problem. If you make it in NBBO, so you'll find all of the notes, all of the references in one point under in one heading. So maybe it from uh, 10 respondents, you have uh, 20 resp uh, responses. So when you click on that specific point, you'll find all of the related uh, references in one notes and under the notes, all of the related references. So when you write, uh, just you can put the best two or three to support your study. But you should keep your uh, the raw file. Uh, raw file, maybe you can be asked uh, by the reviewer or maybe some uh, one after two years or three years. So you should maintain or should keep at least uh, your thesis data at least uh, for five years. Okay. The next question is uh, the participant is saying that his topic is uh, implementing new elements in leadership. So he's asking a question Is it enough to interview only three most prominent figures? Three, only three. For example, an ex prime minister, CEO of companies, and all that. Is three interviewee? Mm, it's quite tough uh, in three uh, interviews, but uh, it's also acceptable. If you ask me, I will say I will accept this one. If you uh, do a single case study, you can also uh, say, for example, uh, select one respondent. You can complete your uh, interview with one respondent's interview also. If you have enough or uh, valid that point, say for example, you can ask anything uh, regarding Malaysia. You can ask um, uh, the ex prime minister, uh, the Dr. Mahathir Mohammed. You can ask him. So you can, if you ask him everything, you can also find uh, the references. But for three, you need to put for if you ask me for a thesis or master's or PhD thesis, uh, you need you will be a uh, question here. You will be question uh, regarding your uh, three respondents whether why you completed with three. Or whether you have uh, the proper justification, the, the data saturation or not. If you have that, uh, the valid responses that you have data saturation, uh, it will be passed. Otherwise, it will be tough uh, to pass in your exam. Uh, it will be, uh, it will be very tough uh, within three respondents with the uh, examiners. But uh, at least you should focus on uh, at least seven masters level, five or six enough. Uh, you have, you can put justification references here. With the previous studies but i uh, should increase more i think so for me i will accept but for a thesis uh three respondent will not acceptable so meaning that the three respondents yeah. should not be enough for PhD enough, study not enough. Enough. yeah no no it, it would not be at least yeah. normally even though uh, i have been asked questions uh by my examiners uh why i have uh, 17 why i have not more uh within the responses of the 17 respondents uh, we cannot generalize um generalize the findings of the world country or a country persuasion then i mentioned i responded that i replied that uh, i selected total 17 respondents answer is here but i took total 34 i made 34 uh, participants but those 17 are here they are the key and prominent person in terms of sharia also in terms of regulatory side also in terms of the expert, they have 30 years, 40 years, more than 30 years, 34, 5, uh, 36, 17, uh, 37 years of uh, practical banking experience. So they are very well known. They know everything, even though they are serving in the bank after retiring as a CFO or CEO or managing director of a bank. Still, they are serving in different banks as an advisor. So in that case, I just asked about it. Still, it will be a questionnaire to justify whether it is generalized, uh, general reliability or not. But you should increase more respondents. Yeah, if your sample size is too small, then it would be very difficult for you to generalize the findings. Yeah, definitely, prof. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, personally, even though I'm not a quality person, uh, if you give me some kind of finding based on three percent, <laughs> it would be difficult to accept. Yeah, it would. It would be or difficult. Maybe about ten to fifteen would be would be good. Yeah, ten to fifteen. I took yeah. interview from the eleven CFO in Bangladesh regarding. The perception of CFO, their um, uh, financing behavior regarding their financing behavior is an ongoing project. So, uh, in that case, maybe CFO one equal to maybe finance executive one equal to three. So, if you converted it ten is to uh, three year total thirty respondents. But CFO they are very busy. They know everything. They are the top key uh, CFO uh, of the top uh, most companies in Bangladesh. So it's 
also accept it. Uh, we should ensure uh, or check the background of the respondents. Uh, whether the background maybe uh, you can ask one professor equal to three lecture or four lecture. You can also uh, clusters like that way. So if you take interview from six professors and also ten uh, lecture is not same. It will not be equal. Ten professor equal to you should uh, need at least twenty or uh, more than twenty five or thirty near thirty. So it will be so that you can justify your findings. Okay. The next question is, what happens if the data comes in the form of audio, not in the form of? To writing from okay. Uh, in audio, you need to transcribe. Uh, when you took interview, um, you just uh, record your phone or a smartphone or any other device. Uh, make sure that you have copied uh, in your another phone when you make it, uh, when you uh, record it in your mobile. So you just uh, need to ensure that you have managed it in another sources also in another device. So you need to, if you it is if it is in your local language, in that case, uh, you need to translate initially, translate and transcribe and translate. If you do that, it would be better. But if you do not have enough time, you need to take help from a uh, professional body so that they can transcribe and translate in English for you. Whether you have the your thesis if it is in English, so uh, it would be it should be in English, but it should be by a professional one. And even though if you do it, you can check it uh, by a third person or professional body to rectify, to make any amendments, to make corrections, uh, to uh, make the grammatical uh, mistakes or to uh, alter the grammatical mistakes or to make uh, the more uh, cross check uh, your um, uh, interview respondents or transcripts or uh, your answers. All right. Uh, the next question is how to increase the validity or reliability of qualitative interview. Uh, okay in quality research uh, the first issue is that you take an uh, interview face to face or personally you have the evidence the recording evidence uh, this is the first issue. if you do not have the this is the main issue we have interpersonal conversation there it's not a one part of conversation we have the interpersonal conversation this is the first issue you can observe yeah i am uh, saying something okay i am happy but see my face my face is not happy i don't show any happiness in my face I say like the dream. It's not uh, maybe I am sorrow, but I say I am happy. But my face so that uh, I am very sorrow. It's like that way. So when I say I will, I'm happy. So you say the happiness. You see the happiness in my face. Use some gesture, facial expression of expression. Uh, you can also uh, find that expression. Uh, the observation. You can justify uh, the observation. What you observe during the interview. Their facial expression. Their walking environment. Their workload. Uh, their way of expression. I say I am okay. I'm good. Uh, it means that I'm not good that way or that happiest and the person not happier like that way. Uh, it's maybe good, maybe a uh, low standard or low quality, not uh, much that way. And I said, oh, no, no, I am very happy. Okay, brother, what do you want to say? What kind of do you need? Then maybe you can say that, oh, it's, maybe he's very happy with his working one with his job. So you can also this one and also you can collect some meeting notes uh, or meeting menu if you have. And you can take some uh, notes whether uh, they're working uh, in their environment, some working issues there, uh, some notes, uh, they're working pressure, other issues. You can uh, just by putting this in your field notes uh, with this observation, you can uh, justify your uh, findings validity. Okay. Uh, the next question is basically students, uh, this participant is asking what would be the appropriate sampling technique when he is interviewing faculty members from a department, okay, from few departments. Uh, is it convenient sampling, judgment sampling, or what? No, the, the participant want to know exactly what kind of sampling technique can be used. Uh, okay, uh, normally what you can do, uh, Papa, normally I used uh, the Papasi sampling. Uh, convenient sampling also, uh, I used the Papasi sampling. Later, I also mentioned in my thesis that I used also the snowball sampling. Uh, I used that one. Because when I met with uh, some of the people on after getting five or six respondents and some of the respondents are still suggesting, yeah, uh, I asked also them, oh, what can I do? I already took interview. Uh, who are the best uh, well known person here? Can you suggest me another one? You can also select that one, but you can select based on their experience, based on the study visibility. This, say for example, I am working on accounting, prof is working on management or uh, supply chain. So is, if it's your study is related to the accounting area, so maybe you can select with the accounting persons or maybe you can select with the um, uh, management person, but you can make a combination. Prof, here maybe I saw one question in the screen, but maybe some it uh, lost. So in that case, maybe uh, you can select two or three professors uh, we get there for the best knowledge. Even you can ask also 
the lower level maybe the lecture initial stage uh, two or three teachers maybe you will get the combination you can also make uh, the middle stage um maybe as associate professor as student professor you can make cluster based on your papas which our respondents uh serve you um your papas or objectives all right uh, next question is quite important because in research we always look for reference citation so this participant is asking is there any reference in order to verify the number of participants for quality tv to be yeah we you have too many too many references and too many references uh you just uh check the google uh you can use normally the guest uh the crystal mariam uh sounders these are the uh, normally very um useful references uh very uh well known references and if you see my paper i already mentioned that here i had uh mentioned too many uh references that uh you'll find 5 to 10 10 to 15 17 uh, 20 50 60 is there any difference okay yeah you can find uh, there no problem just check the methodological paper and the methodology crystal book or any other book mariam also i think this this basically are the questions that uh, uh we had from uh, the participants since it is not face to face session so <laughs> it is difficult you know uh, since uh, it is is youtube live so i think you have tackled uh, most of the question raised and uh, uh, i think we are coming towards the end of the session uh, our moderator is missing because of internet issues dr sonia lohana yeah i can understand uh, but anyway thank you dr kasialam it was a wonderful session uh, uh, thank I you so much for thank you participants yeah. for your uh, participation yeah the participant we have attended the session uh if you uh, come back uh, because earlier at the beginning dr kaso was going quite fast so some of them uh, couldn't really follow you but later you uh, because of uh, losing that data so you run it again i hope that will be helpful but again uh, participant those of you who join us in the session uh, the video will be available in our youtube channel that form for research and development you can still be with and uh, practice it uh, when you are at home okay um uh no, no no not much of question there all right uh, dr kaur sir uh, would you yeah, like to say uh, your last word the uh, last sentence uh, for the participants uh thank you very much and uh, please uh, qualitative is best way uh what the best option the best door or a room for research but uh whatever you have the research but try to focus uh, on the issue and good luck uh, with the research and thank you for your participation and thank you prof uh for your kind invitation and thank you to the participants and our moderator thank you very much all right uh, participants basically i'm not a quality person i'm a quantitative person so uh, we start where the quality qualitative research stops <laughs> so the novelty original research is undertaken by qualitative researchers qualitative. and then we work based on that okay so it is a very important aspect of research qualitative research uh, those of you are uh, doing phd or masters uh, adopting this method uh, i hope uh, i i strongly believe this session will be very useful and helpful uh, you can still communicate with me uh, if you uh, participants if you need any further sessions uh, by telling us exactly what you need then we can arrange uh, a few more sessions for you all right uh, so you all take care stay safe and uh, hope to see you some other session is uh, thank you again dr kashar and uh, thank, you, thank you thank you so much assalamu alaikum and assalamu alaikum